I'm Harry. And we are here to give you some big facts. It's big! <clears throat> Iceland imports ice cubes. A group of ladybirds is called a loveliness. Prince Philip was born on a kitchen table in Corfu. Josiah is secretly the drummer for the Red Hot Chili Peppers, Nirvana and the Foo Fires. Ella has 12 toes. Slugs are twice as fast as snails. Joel owns three tigers. We have a strap, strap gang with it. This just in, the earth is a globe. Don't under, don't under that, undermine me that. on air. Thank you for joining me for Big Facts. Well, we're going to keep on looking at the book of 1 Thessalonians. Here's what we know so far. The Thessalonian church is thriving. They are genuine believers, and that can be seen in their work produced by faith, their labour prompted by love, and their endurance inspired by hope. Not only did they listen to the word of God as it was taught to them, but they acted upon it. They put it into practice, and they kept going in the face of persecution. It's good news. The Thessalonian church is thriving. But what about Paul? Imagine yourselves in Paul's shoes, leaving Thessalonica uh, and, and before he's heard Timothy's report. He must have been so concerned. He must have been so worried for that small, young church in Thessalonica. It must have been heartbreaking for him to leave. I just imagine for a second having to leave people you cared about in a dangerous and difficult situation. What would you do? Well, what Paul does is put into practice one of the very things he praises the Thessalonians for. One of those markers of true believers. Labour prompted by love. Uh, look at verses 17 to 20 of chapter 2 with me again. But brothers and sisters, when we were orphaned by being separated from you for a short time, in person, not in thought, out of our intense longing, we made every effort to see you. For we wanted to come to you, certainly I, Paul, did again and again. But Satan blocked our way. For what is our hope, our joy, or the crown in which we glory in the presence of our Lord Jesus when he comes? Is it not you? Indeed, you are our glory and joy. See, even though the Thessalonians are going well and enduring under persecution, Paul is desperate to visit them. His language is so strong. He, is, they are, he feels orphaned by being separated. He has an intense longing to see them. He's made every effort to do so. And Satan blocks him at every turn. Last week, Paul described himself as both a mother and a father to the Thessalonian church. Here he uses the, the language of being orphaned and of longing. Uh, so picture a family reunion post-lockdown. Uh, that is what Paul is longing for. He's longing to see people. I don't know what you're missing most uh, during lockdown, but for lots of people, it's family. Longing to see grandparents after they've been isolated for 12 weeks. Uh, longing to see uh, aunts and uncles and cousins we've not seen in a while. Grandparents longing to see their grandkids who may have grown and changed so much in lockdown. Paul longs to see his Thessalonian family that he's connected to and invested in. He's worried about them. 
He doesn't yet know if they're holding up and he wants to see them thrive. They are his hope and glory and joy. He wants nothing more than to stand in front of Jesus with the thriving Thessalonians. And so he acts. Uh, Look with me at chapter 3 verses 1 to 5. So when we could stand it no longer, we thought it best to be left by ourselves in Athens. We sent Timothy, who is a brother and co-worker in God's service in spreading the gospel of Christ, to strengthen and encourage you in your faith, so that no one would be unsettled by these trials. For you know quite well that we are destined for them. In fact, when we were with you, we kept telling you we would be persecuted. And it turned out that way, as you well know. For this reason, when I could stand it no longer, I said to find out about your faith. I was afraid that in some way the tempter had tempted you, and that our labours might have been in vain. Paul couldn't cope. He couldn't cope with not, with not knowing how the Thessalonians were doing. And so he sends Timothy to strengthen and encourage them. Now that was probably quite a big cost for Paul. It was quite a costly move. At the time he was ministering in Athens and facing huge opposition there, being persecuted there. And in fact, having Timothy work alongside him was probably a huge comfort to him. And not only was was Timothy's work comforting to him, Timothy and Paul were incredibly close. Here Paul describes him like a brother. In another letter called 1 Timothy, Paul describes him as a true son in the faith. In fact, their relationship brings to mind uh, a Proverbs uh, chapter 18. Uh, It says this, One who has unreliable friends soon comes to ruin but there is a friend who sticks closer than a brother. Timothy is a friend who is closer than family to Paul. So sending Timothy to the Thessalonians was a sacrifice for Paul. But his love for the Thessalonians meant that he couldn't stand not knowing any longer. And so off Timothy went to encourage and strengthen the Thessalonians. Uh, You could imagine this is the spiritual equivalent of a mother bird bringing back food for her chicks. Or when you watch a nature documentary and see a lioness bringing back meat for her cubs. This is Paul and Timothy's labour prompted by love. Love results in working to strengthen and encourage faith. And look what Paul hears back from Timothy. See, he hears about the Thessalonians encouraging faith. Look at verses 6 to 10 of chapter 3. But Timothy has just now come to us from you and has brought good news about your faith and love. He has told us that you always have pleasant memories of us. And that you long to see us just as we also long to see you. Therefore, brothers and sisters, in all our distress and persecution, we were encouraged about you because of your faith. For now we really live since you are standing firm in the Lord. How can we thank God enough for you in return for all the joy we have in the presence of our God because of you? Night and day we pray most earnestly that we may see you again and supply what is lacking in your faith. See, the outcome of Timothy's visit and his report back to Paul was that they were encouraged. Timothy went there in order to encourage the Thessalonians. And yet verse 7 says that in all our distress and persecution we were encouraged about you because of your faith. Paul sends Timothy to encourage the Thessalonians and yet his report of the Thessalonians' faith was an encouragement to Paul. They have faith. They are loving one another. They've got fond memories of Paul. They also long to see Paul. See, it's a joy 
to see people you care about growing in their faith and enduring things when life gets hard. And most of you know that Sarah and I have the privilege of leading a summer camp called Sparkford 2. There are many joys which camp brings. But the biggest one is seeing young people come back year after year still loving Jesus, still seeking to follow Jesus. They haven't all had easy years. They all definitely still battle sin. And yet they come back still following Jesus, still loving Jesus. And that is the biggest encouragement of summer camps. So Paul's love for the Thessalonians uh, results in labour by sending Timothy. And the Thessalonians' faith is encouraging to Paul. We see here on display two of those markers of the genuine believer. Labour prompted by love and work produced by hope. And then Paul ends this section of the letter by turning to prayer. Now let me read his prayer to you from verses 11 to 13. Now may our God and Father himself and our Lord Jesus clear the way for us to come to you. May the Lord make your love increase and overflow for each other and for everyone else, just as ours does for you. May he strengthen your hearts so that you will be blameless and holy in the presence of our God and Father when our Lord Jesus comes with all his holy ones. See, Paul prays three things off the back of this report from Timothy. Please clear the way for us to visit. We love them. Please help them to love one another. Please strengthen them until Jesus returns. Help them to endure while they wait so that they'll be holy and blameless, still clinging to Jesus when he comes back. Now this might seem like an obvious thing, but if you love someone, you pray for them. The prayers of loving believers don't just stop at practical needs. These are deeper, life-changing prayers. So let me ask you, do you pray for your brothers and sisters in Christ? Do you pray for other Christians at youth group? Do you pray uh, for their love and their faith to grow? Do you pray that they would endure no matter what happens because they have hope in the future? See, this passage gives us wonderful examples, examples of those Markers of genuine believers played out in the life of Paul and Timothy and the Thessalonians. We're going to pray and then we're going to break into groups to discuss some of those questions further. But why don't we pray now to end. Father God, thank you so much for the letter to the Thessalonians. Thank you for the example of Paul and Timothy and their labour prompted by love. Thank you for the example of the Thessalonians, their active faith which encouraged Paul. Father, please would you help us to be men and women who love one another with actions. Would you help us uh, to be men and women who encourage one another with our faith. Father, please would you be with us. Help us to care for one another, to love one another, to encourage one another and to pray for one another. Amen.